Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to take a look at how new features are added in C-Sharp, not all of them but the overwhelming majority of them and help you understand how they're being added because I think if you don't fully grasp that concept then it can be dangerous for you and how you use them. We're going to take a look at three or four major features and also take a look at how this process is kind of changing where it is possible to change. If you like the type of content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe ring the sub notification bell and for more training check out nickchampsters.com. Now super quick reminder that I am still running my two-day in-person workshop from Zero to Hero Effective Testing in C-Shop in a bunch of conferences a year. For now, the confirmed ones are NDC London.net Days in Romania, NDC Oslo and NDC Porto with NDC Copenhagen to be announced. And NDC has given me one ticket to give away to you for any of those conferences. So to sign up and win it, check the link in the description. So let me show you what I have here. I have a simple console application over here. It doesn't really have anything. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new person class. And now in this class, I'm going to create a string property called full name. Now, as you can see here, I have a warning saying, hey, this is uninitialized. This could be null because string is not declared to be nullable. So what are you doing here? If I do this, I'm going to suppress the warning because I'm going to use nullable reference types. And now it knows that it might be null. But if I remove it, then it kind of makes me or warns me to deal with this. Now, you can turn this into an error if you want to. You can go ahead and say, warnings as errors and you can specify nullable and if you do that then it kind of forces you to handle the value this does not mean however that this value can't be null in runtime for example i can say default excla exclamation mark or null exclamation mark here and if i go to the program i can say person equals new person over here and then if i just have a right line so the application doesn't exit if i debug this and i check what's happening behind the scenes, then the person will be created absolutely fine with a null value. And the reason why this is happening is because that concept of a null reference type is purely a very high level compiler concern. It is not a runtime concern. You have to understand that .NET for years have been scared to death to touch the runtime in any meaningful way. And it's actually why things like static abstract members took so long to be put into C Sharp. So features that have been added in C Sharp they were added on the very high level compiler level so the runtime doesn't change because if it changes it might break and they just can't afford to break it. And actually you can see that because if I go here and I say that hey now this is nullable and I go ahead and I compile it and I go to the IL viewer you can see that I now have some instructions in attributes so nullable zero and nullable context too but there is nothing nullability related on the actual code itself. That's because the compiler will go in here check those attributes and that's how it's going to make all its decisions about the warnings and the errors it's going to display. But that's about it. To give you a better understanding on how this is actually working behind the scenes, I'm going to go ahead and use the init keyword over here. Now, you might think that the init keyword is something special, but the truth is, it's not. I can actually, again, build and I go to the IL viewer. And yes, on the low level C sharp now, I see init. But if I go to the IL level, you're going to see that this method is still the set full name method. It is still a setter. It is just handled by the compiler in a way where you cannot invoke it after initialization. So if I went to the program and I said person dot full name equals Nick Chapsis, then obviously I can't do that. The compiler will say no. However, it is totally fine of me to go and say type of person dot get property, call the property by its name, so name of person dot full name dot set value, and I can set it to Nick Chapsis if I wanted to. So person Nick Chapsis, nothing will stop me here. And I can even suppress the error saying, hey, I know that this thing exists, so shut up. I'm gonna go ahead and just debug this real and just show you what happens. So person, it is null, even though it is not nullable, and I can set the value absolutely fine through reflection because the setter still exists. The init keyword is only surface level and doesn't really exist as far as the runtime is concerned. And this is the exact same with features like required. If I go ahead and I now say required, meaning I don't have to specify that the default value is not nullable because now the compiler will force me to initialize this when I say, for example, person here. So I'm going to say add initializer. Then if I do that and I say John Doe, well, obviously two things happen. First, I can still run this and I can show you that, yes, it is initialized with this John Doe name, but I can still change the value with reflection later. So purely compiler level. And also nothing stops me by just saying var person 
equals activator dot create instance and specify that yeah this is a person and I can totally do that and if I do that I can create that object without having to set a value and nothing will break that is the main point because it's just so surface level so the main reason why I'm raising this is because I don't want you to be in a false sense of security that just because you're using those features they can never be in that state yes they can just because of how those features were added into the language now this is not necessarily bad but you just have to understand it let me show you another thing for example now we don't want to have any of that what we want to do is have an immutable record you know record person you don't need this and I'm gonna say string full name so we now have the full name property over here and we have a record now many people thought when this was introduced that record is a special type that has immutability baked in and so on and so forth the truth is that if I go ahead and I compile this and I go to the low level C sharp then as you can see all that this is is actually a class that implements iEquitable of that type and then it has the same backing field, the same constructor. It also has an overridden two string method, some print members. So there's nothing special about that type on the runtime level. As far as the runtime is concerned, this is still a class and that's it. Unless you specify it as a record struct, which in that case it is a struct, which makes sense. And it's the same with other things. For example, the file keyword modifier now for access. This is just an internal class behind the scenes with an impossible to replicate name. Now, I should also point out that now Microsoft is actually effectively allowed to make changes to the runtime. And we're going to see more interesting features like we saw with the static abstract members, which did require the runtime change. And that's why they were basically in preview for one release and then later actually released with C Sharp 11. And actually, if you've seen any of the interviews with Matt Storgensen, which is the lead designer for C Sharp, you will see how relieved he is that he can actually make those changes now to the runtime to add more interesting features. So if there's one thing I'd like you to take away from this video is to actually drill into how the those features are added if you really want to master the language because by doing so you're going to make less assumptions about the code you write and ultimately lead you to write better code but i want to know your thoughts how do you feel about this thing because effectively most of the latest c sharp features have been syntactic sugar over things that existed which in my opinion doesn't necessarily devalue the features but it also shows you why they couldn't just add more interesting stuff in the language. I'm really curious to know what you think. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreon for making videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe more to like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.